One of the most commonly asked questions I get is about which filters I use for astrophotography. That's both uh, with a telescope and my DSLR camera uh, or a dedicated CMOS camera like the 183C or uh, using a camera lens. So in this video I'm going to show you all of the filters I use and what I recommend. Over the years I've used a number of different filters, uh, so I have some experience uh, mostly shooting here in the backyard through uh, heavy light pollution, uh, but I've also used some of these filters under some darker skies while traveling. The first thing I'll mention is that I've got two types of filters here. I've got the two inch round mounted style uh, threaded filters, and then the DSLR clip-in style filters. So the one threads into the field flattener uh, barrel of your camera, the two inch round mounted style. And then the other one is a clip and filter that clips into the body of the camera. This one's a bit different. This one uh, actually has a, a filter holding ring. This one you can see is clipped right into the camera itself. No matter what I'm shooting uh, from home, I need to have a light pollution filter installed in the camera. Without it, uh, a 30 second exposure at ISO 1600 would just be completely white. I'm in a red zone, uh, so that's Bortle 7. So any of you guys that are shooting in similar situations, um, you can expect some pretty similar results using the filters that I, I like to use uh, when you're shooting from home. Some of the commonly used terms uh, when it comes to astrophotography filters are uh, LPS, light pollution suppression, UHC, ultra high contrast, uh, AR coatings means anti-reflective coatings, uh, and then there's IR cut filters and UV cut filters. So the IR is infrared blocking and the UV is ultraviolet light blocking. To me, the absolute best filter for astrophotography is the one that produces consistent results with usable data night after night from your specific imaging location. Uh, there's so many variables, uh, the amount of moonlight that night, uh, the transparency in the air, uh, light pollution of course, it is so hard to go apples for apples with filters because there's just too many variables to compare uh, to get really down and uh, split hairs with the differences between the filters. So what I'm giving you here is, is some pretty general advice from, uh, from my personal experiences. So I've covered the, the clip-in style filters versus the two inch round mounted versions. Uh, the other two main uh, sides of the table here for filters is narrow band filters that capture in specific wavelengths only or uh, broadband RGB filters that capture natural color. So these days I like to do a blend of both. Uh, I'm just a big fan of, of true color deep sky images, uh, but I can't ignore the power of uh, adding a narrow band filter to, uh, to capture some additional details. One of the most important ones is hydrogen alpha. If you do get um, a narrow band filter, HA is probably the best one to start off with. The first one I got was the astronomic 12 nanometer um, HA filter clip-in for my DSLR. Some things to note when you're when you're using a filter like that, the uh, everything's going to be much dimmer in your image frame. So depending on on the way you shoot, if you're just using uh, the camera to uh, find focus with uh, say live view, only the brightest stars are going to appear, even if you've got that ISO crank to uh, say ISO 3200. So it makes framing up objects a lot more difficult. One thing I like to do in those situations is either use no filter or just a CLS filter uh, to frame up my object, uh, lock the focus in, take the camera off, swap the filters out, take the CLS out or, or no filter at all, and then swap the H alpha in, uh, knowing that you've already been, you're already framed up. And then you'll just have to do some minor tweaking with uh, the focus and you might have to take a few test frames. 
uh, images shot through narrow band filters will typically be much longer than anything you would shoot broadband RGB, uh, anywhere from three to five minutes. So I'll get into some of the uh, specifics here in the filters that uh, I've found to be the most effective. One of my favorite ones recently has been the Bader Moon and Sky Glow uh, Neodymium filter. That's this guy right here. So this is for shooting RGB true color images. And uh, so because these filters are trying to block out certain wavelengths of light, uh, artificial lighting like street lamps and also blocking out some of the light you do want in the way of uh, some of the blue hues in some of the in natural star colors. So while this one does uh, create some really good, great contrast in my images and much improved over not using a filter for color images, it has a way of uh, kind of turning, tinting everything uh, with a hint of red. And uh, I've talked about this before, uh, and it's just due to it's cutting off some of those natural wavelength colors. Fortunately though, um, you can correct this in post-processing in, in uh, Adobe Photoshop, and there's a number of ways to do that. One of the easiest is to uh, use the select color range mask on your stars and then you can independently adjust uh, the stars in question. The red ones you can you can turn them back, pull them back away from red into more some of the natural blue colors that uh, that are there. So that's typical of, of a lot of the broadband filters that I use. Even more so is with the SkyTech CLS CCD filter. Now this happens to be one of my absolute favorite filters to you to use. It's um, one of two go-to broadband filters with my DSLR because it just creates um, an impressive amount of contrast. For instance, in emission nebulae like uh, the Omega Nebula or the Eagle Nebula, I could take a, a three minute sub at ISO 1600 here in my backyard and just get that striking bold uh, nebula to appear on you know a relatively dark sky uh, which is incredible when you're considering how much light pollution I'm shooting through so it creates that contrast there it gets, gives you those meaty details you want uh, but at the cost of uh, like I said a kind of overall red tinge that you'll have to adjust so if I was shooting under you know some really dark skies at a dark sky site uh, I would use something a lot less harsh uh, and I would get those natural colors without that red tinge. Uh, it's just due to all that light pollution. So some of the obvious benefits to uh, each style of filter, um, the two inch round mounted versions are great because it goes into the flattener here. So wherever you happen to, uh, to get this on on your imaging train, uh, you can put it in front of, of a camera like this, the 183C or uh, a CCD camera. Um, if the flattener was on the DSLR, uh, I could be using that filter with the DSLR as well, whereas these clip filters are, you know, DSLR only, and uh, more specifically, the ones I have are for Canon APS-C uh, size sensor DSLRs only. Uh, so they're not for full frame, uh, and they're not for Nikon. Uh, it's a very specific size. Uh, there are Nikon clip-in filters, lots of them available, as well as full frame versions. Uh, they're quite pricey though um, for what they are. There's a lot of technology that goes into this glass. One, another thing I should mention is that uh, a lot of questions about this. A modified DSLR uh, that's had the stock IR cut filter removed, which uh, both of my modded cameras have, will need some sort of UV IR cut filter uh, in place of the one that was removed so that you don't get star bloat in your photos uh, and then you can properly focused through um, an ED refractor like the one I'm using. The guys that have got their cameras modified that have installed the uh, Bader IR filter or the clear glass or I'm not exactly sure what it's called but uh, if you get the professional modification uh, not a naked sensor mod like I've got um, they, they'll often put that UV IR filter in there. Luckily for me ones like the SkyTech CLS CCD include an IR cut filter in with it and uh, many of them do. As you can see, the, the Bader Moon and Sky Glow also has that IR cut filter in there for modified cameras. The other thing to mention with these, with these uh, clip-in filters is that um, they accept only, these ones anyways, accept only EF Canon lenses or there's aftermarket lenses that, that don't go deep into the camera body. 
uh, as you can see there's not a whole lot of room there so um, a lens that attaches deeper into the body will actually run into the glass this 50 millimeter lens just comes right up on top and the ability to shoot with camera lenses and in filters in the body you really can't beat that so if you're traveling to kind of a rural area and you've got something small like uh, a wide angle camera lens, your DSLR and uh, say the uh, like a sky tracker. Uh, you just want a, um, a moderate light pollution filter in there uh, or UHC filter to just get that better contrast even in your wide field images um, and cut out a, what little light pollution there is. Lastly, um, I'll just say, and these ones were the most expensive, I actually got a deal from a really nice guy named Sean at redstickastro.com and I've got the full set of narrowband filters here, HA, S2, and O3. So the, I got these basically um, for using the Altair Hypercam and future uh, CCD style cameras um, that are much more sensitive. And then I can create some false color images in narrowband. Um, if you color map these uh, wavelengths to say the Hubble palette, you can create some really beautiful images uh, right in the heart of town it just almost completely ignores uh, light pollution and moon glow, so narrowband filters are amazing for that. Well, I think I've rambled on long enough about filters. Um, just as a recap, oh, I did not talk about uh, the filter in here. This is the IDIS LPS-P2 uh, clip-in filter, although it's a bit different. I needed to order the uh, filter holding ring. It actually, you know, screws into this little filter holding ring. Um, and the, the filter holding ring actually is, is installed with a, a little screw in here. This one's great too, comparable to the Moon and Sky Glow and the Skytech uh, CLS. Uh, a little bit better though, and a little bit more expensive. Uh, just happens to be the, uh, the, the quality of the glass here used. So the IDIS and the Skytech CLS CCD, my go-to broadband RGB light pollution filters here in the backyard uh, for narrow band would be, um, first one to get would probably be the uh, Astronomic 12 nanometer HA, HA. I don't think anyone actually says HA. Um, and then um, the two inch round mounted versions, uh, if you do have a full frame DSLR or you plan to use uh, other cameras in the future, uh, you can't go wrong with them, although they are quite expensive. Uh, the blowers out here, just because um, another benefit of uh, these filters is that they cover up the sensor. Whether that's on a camera like this or in the camera body, they, they, they're the shield to your sensor and then you can just bl blow the uh, dust off these guys. So yeah, that's that. Hope you enjoyed this discussion about uh, astrophotography filters for your camera and telescope. Um, subscribe to this channel for more information like this and uh, I hope you, uh, you learned something. Clear skies. Just another Thursday night in the garage. Hey, what's daddy doing? What's daddy doing?